the term Russian oligarch has recently been in the headlines. Four Russian oligarchs, all with direct ties to either the Kremlin or the sanctions along the Russian banks and Russian oligarchs. Two powerful Russian oligarch. Russian oligarchs. Russian oligarch. Russian oligarch. But what exactly is an oligarch? An oligarch is not just someone who's rich. It's also a person with political ties and influence. How did these Russian oligarchs get their influence? To answer that, we need to look at how oligarchs arose. The Soviet Union first allowed private entrepreneurship in the 1980s. Before that, all businesses were controlled by the state. When the government began permitting private business ventures, it also determined who would control them. For example, Roman Abramovich, then an ambitious teenager, was able to get permission to run a children's toy manufacturer. When the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, Russian President Boris Yeltsin wanted to rapidly transform the country into a market economy. To privatize businesses, the government issued privatization checks to citizens. Those checks could be traded or sold. Wealthy citizens bought up the checks of ordinary Russians and used them to buy stock in newly private companies. The new business leaders, or oligarchs, tended to be former Soviet insiders as well as those working in the black market, the ambitious and well-connected. By 1994, 15,000 state-run businesses had become private, and the oligarchs quickly accumulated massive wealth. In 1995, the Russian government was running short of money and asked the richest oligarchs for billions of dollars in loans. In exchange, the government gave the oligarchs large stakes in lucrative businesses that had not yet been privatized. Many of the industries were undervalued by the government, helping the oligarchs to amass a greater fortune. For example, Abramovich paid $250 million for a large stake in the oil company Simneft. He sold it back to the Russian government a decade later for $13 billion, according to a BBC investigation. As part of the government deals, the oligarchs were expected to help the political elites to stay in power. They used their control of the media, banks, and other industries to ensure Yeltsin was re-elected. When Yeltsin was ready to step down, the oligarchs also helped him pick Vladimir Putin to be his successor. After Putin came to office, he shifted the balance of power among the oligarchs. Friends from his former KGB days benefited, and those who criticized him were investigated. Some, including Mikhail Khodorkovsky, then Russia's richest man, were put in jail. Those who stayed loyal, like Abramovich, were able to keep their wealth. When Western nations imposed sanctions on Russia over its invasion of Ukraine, oligarchs were an obvious target. Western nations seized their overseas assets. Abramovich put the Chelsea Football Club up for sale, ahead of sanctions by Britain. The oligarch will likely not get the proceeds. It's not yet clear how much of an effect, if any, the sanctions on oligarchs will have on Putin's policies in Ukraine. For Abramovich, Forbes estimated his wealth in late April at $8.9 billion, despite the sanctions. 